All right, welcome back to the Brittany Rossi Show. And today I have a lovely friend with me here today. Her name is Henriette Donnell. And Henriette is a strategic business coach. She empowers women with service-based businesses to monetize, get more clients, and grow. So they can finally take back their life into their own hands and create their own opportunities. Such powerful work, Henriette. So I want to, I've already introduced you, but will you introduce yourself a little bit more to us and let us know what your background is and how you got into business? Oh, well, thank you so much, Brittany. It's such an honor to be here with you today. And you and I have already had some great discussions before, but I think one of the things that that I'm so intrigued about and that I absolutely love to share is the fact that anybody can start being an entrepreneur and start a business. For me in particular, I started with a completely different background. I started in the interior design industry where I worked in the Chelsea Harbour Design Center in here in London in the UK. And I was there for 11 and a half years, loved what I do. Uh, or what I did. Um, but then there was always this part of me, a, a kind of an element on the side that just didn't feel like this is going to be my forever thing. Mm. And uh, that kind of just postponed, and I postponed it quite a lot because obviously being in the corporate world, I was very comfortable being there. But then one day I just had a wake up call and I realized that if I didn't take any action now and start doing something that I am passionate about, that I've want to continue doing for the rest of my life, then I would never be able to do it. And I kind of like pushed myself very much in order to make that transition and to take that leap of faith, as I so to speak call it. But then one day I just decided that I need to go into the entrepreneurial world. And I always wanted to go into the online world where, you know, things are developing at a much faster pace, but also technology is evolving. So it would only make sense to go and start being an entrepreneur online. Now, the reason why I became into business coaching was because apart from just working in the interior design industry, I was very much a strategist as well. Mm. So I was the go-to girl. Whenever there was a problem, people would come to me and say, oh my gosh, we've got a problem. Can you help us find a solution? And every time we managed to get a solution, which I felt so proud of, but that was one of the strengths and the skills that I had, which I didn't realize at that moment in time. But then obviously, once I decided to go into the entrepreneurial world, well, that is a skill that I knew I could monetize and obviously start my business. Yes. So becoming a strategic business coach was one of the things that I was so fortunate to kind of like discover immediately and just to go and follow that path. And honestly, I can say it was the best decision I've made. Yes, I enjoyed my job, but now being an entrepreneur and being able to be in that position where I can help other women, it is just phenomenal, phenomenal. So yes, the best decision of my life. <laughs> That's wonderful. And there were so many little things in there that I think a lot of us um, who are still early in our entrepreneurial careers are thinking about it. That resonates in me, the whole like dissatisfaction of like, I like what I do, but I feel like there's something more, right? There's something more that I want to do. And I have these strengths. I'm not sure how they're going to translate, but maybe for some of us, as we've gotten into entrepreneurship, it's like, it starts to rise to the surface and we start to yes. see things more clearly, which is so cool. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about who you are, how you've branded yourself and some of your core business values that are guiding your ship as you navigate? Yes. Yeah, so I think one of the things that kind of guided me a lot, um, and this is something I'll touch up as well when we start talking about mindset in a little bit, but one of the things that kind of guided me a little bit when I started my business was more about what is my purpose? What is my mission? Where do I need to go? And that was a question that I wasn't just asking myself, but as I was starting to coach other women in um, entrepreneurs, that basically was a, co a question that kind of resonated and people started asking me, what, you know, how do I find out what my purpose is? How do I find out what my mission in life is? And that kind of made me think a little bit about what is the real entity for us. And that came together with what my kind of core values are for my business. So I've got a little theory of my own about what your mission and your purpose is in life. Basically, your mission is just your journey, your life's journey, where you're going on. That is your mission, is your mission to go and fulfill that journey and to walk it. Now, we don't know where that journey is taking us. We have an end destination, but we don't know what that end, end destination is just yet. But as you're walking on this journey of yourself and you're discovering much more about yourself, 
your purpose is something that you will only find out at the end of your journey. Now, that purpose could be anything, but evidently that purpose is the legacy that you're leaving behind. And I find that the core values for my business is based on that legacy that I want to leave behind one day, which is all about, well, basically it consists about three things, transparency, honesty, and trust. Mm. And for me, that is what my business is based on. And I feel whenever I coach somebody, there's always going to be those three elements there, transparency, honesty, and trust. And if they are not there, then I won't be able to fulfill my duty towards my students. And obviously they wouldn't be able to take the next steps with on their journey that they need to take on in order to find their purpose evidently as well. Um, so for me, starting as a strategic business coach and going on this journey of not just helping other women, but this is also something that you touched up on um, quite a while back. And you said, you know, for entrepreneurs, it is not just about building a business, but it's all about self-discovery. And I think that is one of the biggest elements that I have honestly learned the hard way, but I'm so glad I did. So for me, the core values would definitely be about the legacy that I leave behind, which is the trust, honesty, and transparency. I love that. Trust, honesty, honesty, and transparency. It's very clear to me. Um, it paints a visual picture in my mind as you're talking about um, your approach to business. And I think it's great that you have done the hard work, the thinking work of what is it that I am about. Mm -hmm. And it's very easy as a step to skip. I think um, in the online space, you're just thinking, I want to make money. I got to find clients. Where do I go? What's next? Like, what's my email marketing strategy? What's my social media strategy? And we don't pause and take that deep breath and say, what are the things guiding those mm -hmm. strategies? Right. And for you, it was those things. Um, but you are a huge strategy person, right? And you love talking strategy with people. Um, what do you feel like, um, as a general rule, if someone's stepping into entrepreneurship, they're newer in this arena, what do you feel like is important for them to feel like they've had success, especially in this first year, right? Um, if they're just getting started, what do you think is important to focus on? Oh gosh, that is such a great question. And it is a good question that I love answering. I will say that for a first time entrepreneur, we are so focused on the new things what is the new strategy? What's going on here? And then we dive into a new strategy and we try and figure it out and we run with it. And then we kind of get distracted and we find, oh, there's another strategy over there. Oh, let me just quickly go and see what that is about. And then you dive into that and you try it out. But every new distraction or every new strategy that you kind of go to and try and figure it out, yes, it's a good learning curve. But if you don't fulfill that strategy and keep on being committed to it over and over again, you will not make a success. And this is something that I've seen more than once. And hands up, it's a mistake I've made myself when I started my entrepreneurial business. I literally jumped from one strategy to the next to try and figure out which strategy is going to help me either get clients, you know, start making some money for my business. And neither one of those strategies worked. Now, it doesn't, it doesn't have to say that the strategy didn't work. It was all to do with me. Number one, my mindset. Number two, because I didn't commit to a strategy, worked it through, went back, reviewed it, and then again, try and repeat the whole process over and over again. No strategy will work first time around. So mm -hmm. for any new entrepreneurs listening to this now, if you are doing a strategy and it's not working for you, don't you know, don't forget about it and don't try and find another strategy. Don't give up on that strategy. You just got to go review it again and repeat the process over and over again until it works for you. Every single strategy out there, it doesn't matter what strategy it is, it does work. It just, make, it just depends on you as an individual on how you make that strategy work for you. I love that. I think that that's really, gosh, there were so many nuggets in there that I want to unpack. <laughs> the first is which of which is, um, is more of an opinion question. Um, what do you feel like is a fair shake, right? To give a particular strategy, how long should I try something before I either review it, tweak it, trash it, or make a decision, some decision one way or the other about it? What do you feel like is a good rule of thumb? 
Well, I would like to say most people just jump into a strategy. There are so many strategies available out there. The first thing is, is just to find a strategy that would work for you, that you feel you are most comfortable with. And then as a rule of thumb, at least have that strategy running for six months. Yes, it is longer than most people want to think about, but let's face it, when you start the entrepreneurial world, when you start your business, you're in it for the long run. It's not a rich, get rich quick scheme or gimmick or anything like that. Once you're committed to something, at least run it for about six months, review it over and over again, and then repeat the process. And then after six months, surely you would start seeing some results. If you even then at a point don't see any results coming through, maybe at that point then you need to think, right, what is my next step? This strategy is not working for me. Either I'm not using the right tools or I'm not using the right concept of trying to figure it out. I haven't learned enough about it. It doesn't feel or fit my business anymore. What is the next strategy that would work for me? Now, I do say that that's kind of like a rule of thumb, but nine times out of 10, when people reach that six month process, they go, oh my gosh, this is starting to work. They can see the momentum. Things are starting to happen for that. And then they just keep at it and they're repeating it over and over again. Before you know, it's like a floodgate that has opened up and it just is an evolving process that just rolls over and over again for you. That's so good. The fact that you're saying like, stick with it, give it time. You know, it really is a process. And what I find too, is that for most entrepreneurs, we're often having to operate in our areas of weakness and not just our areas of strength. So we're wearing multiple hats. We're in this steep learning curve. So we're not implementing it initially at mastery level. We're implementing it at very, very beginner levels yes. most of the time, unless we have some exposure to entrepreneurship and other areas of our life or other experiences, most new entrepreneurs are not, you know, starting any particular strategy, whether that's a list growth strategy or a client acquisition strategy or increasing your visibility strategy. All of those things require time, right? And mm -hmm. patience and diligence, persistence, all these yes. character traits and values that come up have to be foundational. I'm curious to know too, if you feel like you have maybe, and this is kind of an opinion question. So um, do you feel like you have a good way to filter out what is a good fit for you or your clients as a strategy and a way to say like, yeah, there's all these strategies they are coming at you, like information out of a fire hose, right? It's just like blasting you in the face. Um, but you know, is there a way that you like to use to kind of filter through the options? Well, can I tell you a little story, actually? This is a story that recently happened, and I think this will explain the whole process. Um, I started coaching a girl. Um, she is amazing, but she unfortunately lacked a little bit of self-confidence. Now, she knows, you know, she knows that she lacks self-confidence, so she came to me and she said, listen, I need you as my coach. I'm lacking self-confidence. I need to get clients. I really want to grow my business. What do I do? So we started going through the whole coaching process. We only had, we decided to have lunch together. So we had our first coaching session. We had a lovely lunch together and that was about four weeks ago. And I recently caught up with her with our second session. And the second session was more about the strategy of what she's going to do now in order to get more clients. Mm. She got on the call with me and she was just, you know, blooming. She was so excited. She started talking about the last four weeks, how many things have happened. She started going to these events. She started meeting potential clients and how she loved going to these events and talking to people because she felt she getting, she's getting more confident the more events she's going to. And she's only been on three events, you know, in the, in the matter of four weeks, which is amazing. And then as she's going through and she's starting to calm down and I can see she's like so hyped up. She's like, okay, so this call is all about strategy. Now, what strategy do you think I need in order to get more clients? And I said to her, I said, you know what? You already have the answer. You just told me that. And she's like, what do you mean? I said, you told me just now that you love going to events. You already have potential clients now from going to three events. And if you love doing them, that that's the strategy that you need to implement. And automatically she just went like, oh my gosh, you're right. I didn't even think about that as a strategy. And that's why I'm saying there are so many strategies available out there for anybody. It's all about what is comfortable for you. So 
the first kind of session within the coaching business with what I do is we try and kind of find out already what, what they are comfortable with, what their student is comfortable with. And without them knowing it, they automatically get attracted to that kind of strategy. And then when we meet up and we talk about the strategy on the second call, they already go like, oh my gosh, that's my strategy. And it's not me telling them that is a strategy that you need to follow. They automatically have discovered it themselves. But yes, there might be some areas where they go, okay, I need a little bit more guidance. I need a little bit more tools. But I think that is so important because every one of us, we actually have the answers deep down inside of us. We just need somebody who can just lift up the lid and just say, look, there's your answer and close the lid again. <laughs> and um, so when it comes to telling people what kind of strategies are available, if we look at it in a couple of elements, the first strategy as an element would obviously be visibility. So there are numerous strategies about what you can do for your personal brand or for your business to become visible. Then there is the element of attraction. What kind of strategy are you going to put in place in order to attract your clients or your customers? Then there's the strategy of relationship building. How are you going to build your relationship with your customer? And then the last strategy is obviously the transformation. What do you have in place in order to help your customer or your client to go through that transformation process? So evidently it just is broken into about four kind of elements and then underneath those four elements, there's a variation of strategies. So again, it is just something that you need to go and find what is comfortable for you to do. And also not to go and try them all at once because that's where you get overwhelmed. Oh my goodness. Can you just say that last piece? <laughs> time? Because I wish people could hear that. Like you can try them all. Just don't try them all like at the same at time. Once. Oh my goodness. No. So incredibly overwhelming. So incredibly overwhelming. Um, when it comes to the, the four elements, right? You talked about visibility and like attracting and relationship building and transformation stuff. Um, when it comes to those things, right? It's kind of hard to separate them all from them. They, they're all interconnected and yes. they're all woven together. Um, how do you help your clients identify which one um, has the biggest gap in it, right? Because as coaches, we're in the business of connecting dots and helping people find the answer within themselves. So um, for you, what does that look like? Um, I'm going to use another example of a student of mine. She's a photographer and she started her photography business, but she wasn't getting any leads. She wasn't getting any clients. And she kind of touched up on a couple of elements on the online world, what to do, doing a couple of Facebook ads, wasn't quite successful with it. And she came to me and she said, well, what is it that I need to do? What strategy do I need to put in place? And we firstly, I literally showed her almost like an organogram, if you want. And I showed these are the kind of strategies under these four elements, the visibility, attraction, relationship, and transformation. And then I kind of gave her a variation of strategies what are the kind of strategies that you can implement for a photography business to get visibility and which includes obviously social media, et cetera. And then we looked at attraction. What are the different strategies you can implement there? And then relationship and transformation. She took that organogram away then with her and then she had to sit and decide one of each of those elements. What does she want to start with? Because again, we didn't want to get to the overwhelmed stage of trying everything at once. And what she did then for the visibility, she came back and she said, okay, well, you know, Facebook is working well for me. I don't want to do the ads, but Facebook is working well for me. I've got a great following on Facebook already. So I want to use that for visibility. For the attraction part, she started going to events, but also she started using some kind of relations that she had around her in order to spread the word, which then brought new clients for her. So much so that she's fully booked all the way until February next year already, which is crazy. Brilliant. I know. And then the relationship part, that is a different strategy we set in place for her, where then she goes out and she works with these clients. She develops packages in order to help them obviously with what they want at the end of the day from, from the photography, from what they want. And then from the transformation side is basically now looking a little bit more into her business, 
because even though she can give the pictures or the photos that she's taken now for the customers, but that's now also a little part as to where she had to look not just transformation for her customers being happy with the packages and with the photos, but also where she realized that she needed to get extra help in editing the photos. Um, she couldn't do everything on her own anymore. So from the transformational side, that was another element, not just for customers, for, but for her business as well, which she had to look in and we got a strategy in place for that. So at the end of the day, when it comes to strategy, oh my gosh, I mean, people love social media and social media is great, but you need to understand how social media works as a strategy for your business. Facebook advertising. Facebook advertising is great, but you need to understand how that works for your business. If, you know, at the end of the day, it all comes down to your goal. What is the goal that you want? And then work that back in order to find what strategy works for you. Um, so if I have to pinpoint something in particular and say, this is the right strategy you need to go for, this is the latest tool you need to use. I can't do that because everybody is different. Every personal brand is different. Every individual building their business has got a different goal, a different plan. The tools and the things are there. It's just up to you as to what you want to use and how you want to use it. Absolutely. And I think another um, helpful thing that I find my clients see as useful is how do my ideal people consume content, right? Yes. So if I'm working and targeting busy moms who are chasing a toddler and have a newborn attached to them and they're trying to listen and catch up on business things, most likely a podcast, right, is ideal for that visibility piece, even though it's not necessarily mm -hmm. eyes, they're listening, right? They can pop in their earbuds and while the little ones are napping and do dishes and multitask and take in the information for other people. Say, for example, you're in the design world or photography world and you're doing lots of tutorials. Maybe it needs to be video. So like YouTube or Instagram that has more of a visual component to it is the right fit for you. And so taking stock of who your people are and how they consume content will also inform your visibility strategies, right? Yes. And I think where I see most people, and I'd love to hear your thoughts on this, getting hung up is that there is this pressure, just overwhelming pressure to be on all the platforms, all the time, every day of the week, multiple mm -hmm. times a day, and it has to be native to the platform and it's got to be like nailed it, right? Everything has to be SEO backed and already I'm overwhelming myself just talking about it. <laughs> but there is this pressure to do it all. For social media, for the visibility piece, especially, is that something that you're seeing a lot in your world and in your clients? Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's what, coming back to what I said in the beginning. It's all this new kind of things coming up. Let's face it. Social media is still evolving. Mm -hmm. There's going to be a new Instagram popping up, a new Facebook popping up. Those things are constantly happening. It's possibly happening now. They're developing it. And before we know it, there's going to be a new Snapchat. Heavens know what is going to come out next. But that kind of new shiny object that is out there is, is a distraction in some senses as well, because we want to try all the new things. We want to be on all the new platforms. We, we need to do this. And that's the thing. We keep on telling ourselves we must do it. We need to do it. And it's not so much about a need. It's about finding out where your customer or your client is going to be. So you, as an example, um, for your business, maybe your ideal customers are hanging out on Instagram. So one of your strategies will be solely to focus on Instagram. Um, one of my strategies in particular is because I know the majority of my clients would be on Pinterest. So one of my main strategies is totally just Pinterest. Um, I don't do that much Facebook. I used to, I don't do any more because I found out my clients are not really that much on Facebook. Um, so it all depends on where your clients are hanging out. And again, just deciding if you're going to use one or two of these strategies, not more than two, because that's where the overwhelm come. Um, just having one or two of those strategies in place, being committed to it, being consistent with it and running it over and over again, keeping in mind that you know what your end goal is for that strategy. Yeah. Another thing that I want to point out that Henriette is saying is I think we hear this, we hear that we have to try things over and over again, but when we're in the thick of it and it doesn't look like it's working, 
I don't know about you, but I have no desire to try something again that doesn't look like it's working or to reiterate if it had eh, results. I tend to throw the baby out with the bathwater and be like, yeah. it's all a crapshoot and nothing worked. And I just need to try something new and shiny over here that's getting everybody results. That's my leaning. That's my bent. But mm-hmm. what Henriette is saying is keep the same strategy, even if, if it produces mediocre results, especially at the beginning, right? It has results and that is quantifiable. That is qualifiable. Keep working at it and figure out, dial it in, you know, and this takes time. This takes time. Do you find that people have kind of a hard time with the word strategy and feel like it's very like up here above their heads? And Mm -hmm. like, you keep saying like, tell me the strategy, Henriette, tell me the strategy. And you're like, well, you know it and you've already been doing it. So is there, are there other words that you like to use when it comes to strategy? Oh my gosh. Um, the fact that we use strategy, the, the word so much, a lot of people kind of mentally started associating the word strategy with, it's a quick thing. It's, it's a quick solution. I just need to know point one, what do I need to do? Two, what's the three, formula? four, what's the secret <laughs> formula? Yes. So strategy has almost become like that kind of secret formula word where people go, I need this, I need this. What is, what is my guide that I need to follow in order to be successful, to make a lot of money for my business? Strategy is more or less just, if I have to give it another word, it's a foundation. And I like to use the word strategy as a foundation. It's a platform that is there that shows you and guides you. Let's use the analogy of a house. You have the foundation for the house. Now you've got the area already filled out. The concrete is there. Now it's up to you to go and decide, are you going to have a wood structure or are you going to have a brick structure on that foundation? Um, how is the rooms going to be laid out? How many windows are you going to have in that room? How, are you going to have a pitch uh, roof? You know, so the foundation is already there and that's what a strategy is, but it's up to you as to how you're going to develop on top of that foundation and how you're going to make that structure your own. And then, you know, being coming from the interior design world, then you go one step further and then you just start decorating the interior of your house. And then you decide what color you want to paint it and all those kind of things. So you can honestly take any platform, any strategy and make it your own. You can build on top of that. And that's why I'm saying that whenever somebody gets a strategy, they basically get this concrete foundation. They run around on it and go, oh, this is not working. Let me go and find another concrete um, foundation. Um, So rather than going over and over and start building your house, your building on top of that foundation, and yes, a couple of bricks are going to break, and yes, the window might smash, and you're going to have to replace it. But that's fine because there's no, there's no such thing as mistakes. They are only lessons. And those kind of things happening while you're working on building this foundation, well, those are the lessons that you're learning. So when this kind of strategy is then bringing the dividends, it's then start working for you once your house is built on it. Only then do you go, okay, this one is now up and running. It's doing well. Let's go and find another foundation to start building on. So just to come back to what you said, using the word strategy is great, but if I would have to use the analogy, I would use it as a platform or kind of like a concrete structure for you to build on and obviously monetize that for your business. I think that that's a wonderful analogy and a beautiful illustration. Like I can clearly picture that in my head. And another thing that I want to highlight that you said was there's no mistakes there's only lessons Lessons. learned. That's been a huge shift for me, particularly, I mean, I've been in this process of kind of changing my mindset. I mean, if you haven't learned this yet and you're listening to this podcast, if you're signing up for entrepreneurship, you're just signing up for all kinds of personal development, right? (laughs) It is is a life-changing thing. But this mindset shift into making mistakes and, and perceiving them as a lesson learned, like it's not a waste, it was a lesson. And now I know that doesn't work. And I'm not going to do that again, at least not intentionally. And so um, that, that's a lot of mindset work that comes into the strategy piece. And same with the persistence of trying a strategy over and over again and, mm-hmm. and tweaking it and reiterating it and A-B testing it and figuring out where your sweet spot is. I mean, that's also 
mindset work. And where I see a lot of brilliant women go sideways is in the mindset. And like you said before, you were working with a brilliant girl. Um, she was great. She's good at what she does. She was just lacking in some self-confidence too. And is that something that you can speak to us a little bit about? Because for me, that's been pivotal in my success in my business this year. So what are your thoughts around that? Yeah. So I think this comes down to the third aspect of what I use for coaching, which is the action. And this is normally the stage where people go, oh, I, I don't want to move forward. I'm, I'm scared. I, I, you know, I've, I, I want to do this, but I don't want to take that step. Mm. Now, with anything in life, if you just think about it, and even if you have a how-to guide right in front of you, and you know exactly every single step that you need to take in order to build a business or grow your business, there is a point in our lives, which is part of being human beings, where we're stuck, we're worried, we're letting the mindset take over again, where fear stops us from taking the action and moving forward. But here's the best part. As soon as you take that first initial step in a direction, you're going to go, oh, nothing has happened. You know, that's good. Nothing. The walls haven't caved in. You know, lightning hasn't struck. I'm still fine. Let's take another step. And then with every single step you're taking in the direction of where you want to head, you get more confidence. You realize that you are more capable of doing things that you never would have thought possible. Now, it's, it's not just in business, but it's in life as well. It's one of those things, the, the more you step forward, the better for you and your confidence levels. Um, talking about my student who lacked the self-confidence, but she started going to events. It was so hard for her because she's an introvert. She mm. doesn't like talking to people. So I gave her a little sentence. She was happy with the sentence. So when people approach her or more importantly, she had to go and approach people at the events, not being an introvert, she had to go out there and do it. And she literally said to me that that little sentence that she had ready in her head as to how to introduce herself to people was kind of like the first thing that helped her knowing that she didn't have to stumble over her words or think about what she had to say or what she had to ask or what she had to tell people. But that kind of helped her to take that first step. Then she approached the second person. She took that step, used the same sentence again, introduced herself. And then after the third person, she was so confident. She wanted to meet everybody in the room. And that's what it is about. It's about just taking the action. In life, whatever action you take for your business, uh, for personal growth, there's always an element of confidence that is brought with that. So almost see that as kind of your reward. For every step or action you take forward in life and in business, you get rewarded with confidence. Um, now, if you take leaps forward, you get rewarded with more confidence. So yeah, it's just, it all comes back to, Marie Forleo said this, and, and I heard this the first time from her. She said, progress, not perfection. And the first time she said that, I just thought, oh my gosh, that's so true. Because we're all kind of waiting for the perfect time, waiting to have things perfectly set up before we move forward. Um, waiting for my funnels to be perfect before I can actually launch my course. Or waiting for the webinar to, have to, to be perfect before I can actually do my webinar. And we don't need to go through those stages of waiting for the perfect time because the perfect time might never come. And it is just wasted opportunities for you. So if you think about it in that sense where with every action you're taking, you're being rewarded with confidence and you being rewarded with opportunities presenting itself that you never even knew was possible. Those are kind of like the golden, how can I say, um, the golden trophies that you get along the line and um, these opportunities that are just then you go oh my gosh I never even thought that was possible I never even knew that existed and then the more you start growing as an individual as well I don't think I've ever heard um, overcoming the fear and pushing past um, you know what's causing you anxiety framed that way like your reward is the confidence that comes yes. from that and that is such a true statement and I know that that's one thing that I'm definitely taking away is like one of my favorite gold nuggets from this conversation so thank you for that oh, um, you're welcome that's definitely going to continue to inform how I push past the moments that cause me some like oh this is outside my comfort zone <laughs> <laughs> um, and we all have those don't we I'm sure you have them 
I have yes. them. All have them. Part of being human. That's the thing. But if you start recognizing the fact that, let's see it. When you move forward in life, you can't go back. Okay. We all move forward. Time ticks forward. Time doesn't tick backwards. Mm -hmm. So you can only move forward. So rather than thinking or worrying about the things that might have held you back, rather think about every actionable step you take, there's a reward for that. And the reward is your confidence. The more your confidence builds up, the more steps you want to take forward. So it's kind of like those chicken and egg things. You, you have to start one. You can't start one with the, without the other. But if you start changing your mindset again with that kind of principle, honestly, you'll be able to start running before you know it. It's so true. Everything that you're saying is so true. I just want to like shout it from the rooftops and just be like, <laughs> shake people and say, are you listening to what Henry is saying? Because you have shared so many brilliant nuggets with us today. Thank you for that. Um, but it is true. It really is kind of this cycle and you just kind of have to keep moving forward and slowly but surely you'll find your footing. You'll feel what's right for you and you'll start to pick up your pace. You'll pick up the mm. speed. And that is where much of the profitability starts to come in and it feels exactly. so much easier. So thank you for that. Um, all, all of the brilliant nuggets that you shared with us today. Now, um, we were chatting before and I know that you have um, a special thing that really helps with the visibility and client attraction piece of things. Um, would you be willing to share with us a little bit more about that? Yes, certainly. So I've got an amazing resource guide. 30 resources on how to get new clients or customers, depending if you're in the service-based or product-based industry. But there's just some great resources in there. Some things that you might have heard of and you're already using, which is great. Again, a strategy. But there's some other resources there about what you can do as well um, that you might not have even heard of before. So really spend some time to put all of these resources together. And it's really great. And then what I'm also doing is for everybody who's downloading the resource, who is taking it and wants to work through it, I'm also offering a free coaching call. No pitch, no sales, salesy thing there going. It's just honestly, I'm offering you a free coaching call where we sit together for an hour and you can just tell me what you strategies you're using at the moment, what is working for you, what is not working for you. Any new things that you might have thought of that you wanted to try out and we can just bounce ideas off each other and see if we can help you or guide you in a direction so you can start attracting more customers or clients for your business and evidently grow your business because that's what it's all about as well. Absolutely. Serving and then growing that impact. So brilliant. Well, folks, you can learn so much more about Henriette and what she does at her website, henriettedenell.com. Um, and you can also find her on Instagram at Henriette Denell, Facebook at one Henriette Denell, um, and as well as her free Facebook group, which is called Success with Motivation. You'll be able to find all of these links either below or in the show notes section of my website. So be sure to reach out and connect with her there. She's brilliant at what she does um, and she has a beautiful heart posture too. So would you be willing to share with us before we wrap up? I always invite my guests to share um, their favorite inspirational quote or word of the year, as well as um, your favorite business book or maybe just fun book that keeps you inspired and moving forward. So what's, do you have a favorite inspirational quote or word of the year? Yes. Um, the, the quote that I have is, is sadly to say, actually a motto that I go by every single day. So I'd like to share that because that's something that I stand by every single day. And my motto is that nothing will happen unless I make it happen. Um, it just comes back to the fact that, you know, we're always waiting for some external elements in order to guide us or to show us or just to help us move forward in life. But I always felt that nothing will happen unless I make it up in. If I don't take that step, it will never happen. Um, so that's the motto for me. And I think one of the books that you asked about um, that really inspired me that I'm, I, I think it's about the third time I'm reading that book now, but it's such an inspiration. It's by Seth Godin. This is marketing. And again, it's such a great book. Uh, apart from the, just the fact that it's talking about marketing, but there's so many other deep golden nuggets in there as well that I'm taking away. And like I said, this is the third time I'm reading the book and I'm still picking up on some stuff. So uh, yeah, that's, that's the book that, that's inspiring me at the moment. I love it. So good. And I love your motto. That is incredibly self-empowering, right? 
Um, so thank you for sharing that with us. And thank you again so much for your time, your expertise and sharing all of this wisdom with us. I so greatly appreciate you and appreciate you as a friend. Um, so thank you for being with us today. Well, thank you for the opportunity. I really appreciate it and love being here with you and chatting away. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, that's it for today and the Brittany Rossi show. I hope that you will join us for the next one. Bye guys. Thanks so much for spending your time with me. If you're interested in getting support either through my virtual programs or one-to-one -one support, you can learn more at BrittanyRossi.com. That's B-R-I-T-T-N-E-Y-R-O-S-S-I-E.com. For more encouragement to build a life and business you love, subscribe to the podcast and take a moment to review it in your podcast app. In your review, be sure to tell us how your business is growing.